It was the theme there from the Fed chair that he's not going to be the one to derail that rally, at least. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting that today looks like it's going to go out pretty much how the whole year has gone. Russell 2000 is uh, slightly down. Nasdaq is ahead of uh, S&P, which itself is ahead of the Dow. And this just falls in line with the trends that we've been living with now for uh, almost 11 months. So not much has changed. I think the most interesting thing that um, people are, are taking from uh, Powell's remarks and the statement was almost word for word with the September statement. Um, it's just this idea that it is still a mid-cycle uh, mid adjustment, uh, if you will. In the last uh, couple of decades, we've seen this before. 1998 was notable. There was a financial crisis around the world, and we did what we had to do here. A couple of uh, rate cuts, and then they left things alone for a little while. Um, so the same thing uh, earlier in the 90s when Greenspan uh, shocked everyone with a rate hike and then took it back two years or a year later. So if that's what this is um, and Powell is to be taken at face value talking about there really is no rush, there aren't any inflationary pressures that would have us undo this, that's exactly what the market wants. And that's what he delivered. So I, I think that's in line with what we're seeing in the price action. Steve Leisman is able to join us now, of course, in the room asking questions there to the Fed chair. Steve, what's your take? Uh, I've seen your tweets. It's hawkish on one side, devish on the other. Well, it's not. I don't think it's balanced that way, though. And I initially thought that uh, ch the chairman had uh, talked way more uh, hawkishly, not way more, but a, a bit more hawkishly than was in the statement when the statement said they would assess. And he said, now nah, we're pretty much on hold here. The interesting thing came later, though, also, Wilfred, when he said the only reason we would raise rates is because of significant rise in inflation. It's well to think back. That means that the effort to normalize rates is over. There is no more effort on that. And, and to put in the, in the words of one um, uh, strategist or fixed income person I've been talking to, uh, there's now a one-way bet on rates. It's either going to stay the same or go down. It's almost like the chairman in his comments have removed the possibility of interest rate hikes in almost any scenario. Remember, last year we raised interest rates, not because of inflation, but because we were normalizing. We just lost the moon, as Tom Hanks said, on the issue of normalization uh, when it comes to that. There's no longer that bet in there. So, uh, yes, he was a little bit hawkish in the outlook for rates not going down, but massively dovish, I would suggest, in the possibility that they won't be going up. Yeah, Paul, I see you reacting to Steve's comments right there. And, and, and if, that, if this marks the end of normalization, does that mean that the bar has just gotten even higher for future cuts? I think I agree with uh, Steve first and foremost. I think he nailed it uh, exactly. And it was a mid-cycle adjustment because they overshot neutral. And the most interesting thing to me in a short-term basis is that Chair Powell said he thinks they're a little bit below uh, neutral right now. They're accommodative, uh, which I think is solidifying the notion that neutral is effectively the policy rate equaling the inflation rate or zero real. Uh, but the point that uh, Steve was making, I think, is the real home run here is that it's a one-way bet until inflation is above 2 percent and materially above 2 percent. He's not going to ease anymore, but when you're looking at it as a portfolio manager, you think in terms of the distribution of risk, and there's no risk in the foreseeable future of hikes, and there's risk on the downside if he does a material reassessment of the outlook. So I think that Chair Powell did a fantastic job of saying we're in a good place and we're going to stay in a good place unless we do a material reassessment of the outlook. So effectively saying we're not looking at noise, stop looking at noise yourself. Diana, what's your take now as to, to what comes next based on what he said there? Is December still in play or are we looking into next yeah, year? Yeah, I think I would have liked to see a little bit more emphasis on data dependency because what we got was an emphasis on trade talks, on Brexit, things that are very fluid and could turn around on a dime as we've seen several times this year. Now, removing the possibility of further cuts um, in the near term and saying we're at an accommodative stance is actually a fairly dangerous place for the Fed to be. Last year, the market thought the Fed were behind the curve when stresses emerged. The economy is not looking that robust. You have the ISM manufacturing, non-manufacturing is starting to turn over. The pace of job gains has been slowing down considerably. Durable goods orders are slowing down, implying the pain for the manufacturing sector is far from over. Now, the Fed should have been emphasizing a little bit more that 
the macro data still drives. There is an optionality to cut trade, whereas I think what they did today was they sold that optionality by focusing on trade and Brexit. David, what's your take as to, to, to whether or not uh, we're ever going to see a reversal of the rate cuts we've seen, even if trade is sorted, global growth is sorted? Well, I think he uh, he laid it out. It's really an inflation story, and, and Steve is right. Once he said that, I think he really he sort of took this idea that we could be raising rates or unwinding some of this mid-cycle uh, adjustment for Brexit reasons or for reasons related to international trade. And I think, you, you know, you came into this meeting with people thinking there was going to be a, a, a hawkish cut. So that was sort of a, a bit of a worry on how hawkish he would be and whether there would be a mistake in being a little too hawkish. And the initial, the initial shot of taking out the act appropriately language probably got people on edge. And that's why we saw the dollar rally up a bit and maybe the uh, S&P not rally very much. And I think it went down for a little while. But, um, you know, once he, he sort of started talking and really telling you, hey, this is this inflation problem, it's a big deal. And we're not we haven't hit it for a long time in terms of our 2 percent target. And we've got to really materially be above it to start thinking about raising rates uh, at any point in time. So really, I think it is, as Steve said, kind of a, a one way deal here. Either we're going to get cuts because things slow down and the inflation continues to disappoint. Or we're just going to sit here and kind of grind it out a little bit as we watch some of the international issues uh, resolve themselves. So the stocks equity markets continue to move higher here. We've got the Dow up 110 points. The S&P is at 3047 now. Sarah Bloom Raskin, as someone who has been involved in these types of meetings in the past, watching the press conference today, what was your takeaway? So I think um, Chairman Powell did a really a terrific job uh, at the press conference. It was, as others have said, quite consistent with what was in the statement. Um, at the same time, you see in his tone, he's ending a chapter, right? This is, this was in fact a mid-cycle correction. Um, while he is indeed like leaning heavily on the deflationary risk story, at the same time, <clears throat> you do sense with him that this is, that we have kind of ended the, um, the chapter here, the chapter that was started um, earlier in the year with the rate cut. And I think that, that, um, that, 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 that's what we, that, that that's what we hear. And at the same time, again, he does lean heavily on the inflation side. And he emphasizes that, um, you know, this idea of raising uh, interest rates seems to be something that is a very low probability.